It's my day off. Let's talk about the first two books of The Witcher. Hey guys, my name is Jen. I binge watched all season one of The Witcher on Netflix and I emerged as a big fan of the series. I heard about the video game, never played it, didn't know what I was getting into when I started watching. After finishing all eight episodes, I wanted more, so I ordered the books. Quick info for those who randomly found this video and don't know anything about The Witcher. The Witcher is an epic saga, a fantasy series written by Andrei Savkovsky. What is The Witcher? A Witcher is a monster hunter who has supernatural strength and abilities. The main character in the series is Geralt of Rivia, also called the White Wolf. He's a Witcher. Okay, there are eight books in the series. The first two books are short story collections. The Last Wish, and Sword of Destiny. This book contains seven short stories. This one contains six. What are you gonna find in here? The usual ingredients in a fantasy stew. Castles, royalties, knights, sorcerers, elves, dwarves, dragons, monsters, swords, bow and arrows, dark forests, ale, gold, blood, battles. But it's not like Middle Earth. It's not like Westeros. I didn't waste my time reading this. The Witcher's world is built on the foundations of Slavic mythology and classic fairy tales. It has its own fascinating insight into cultures and conflicts. It makes you think. The stories, each with its own ending, are different colors and shades that gradually paint Geralt and his world in your mind. The writing style is typical high fantasy, but more relaxed than Tolkien. It's originally written in Polish, only translated to English around 14 years later. But I personally didn't find any sentence structure odd. I didn't major in language and literature, I'm a nurse, but here's what I know. And all academics and literary critics, feel free to correct me, okay? Nobody is ever going to agree on what makes a great writing. There's that. You be the judge of what entertains you. So I have my own simple way to know if this is a good series. First, great characters. The protagonist, Geralt, has real heart, and his insights and judgments steer the events. His one true love, Yennefer, she's one of the most complex and intriguing characters in fantasy. Ciri, she has a label on her forehead as Geralt's destiny, but she has her own personality outside Geralt. She's hopeful, naive, and opinionated. Another measure of great writing for me is this. After finishing one story, I found myself keen to read the next one, and another one, and another one. I'm not going to resell the books on eBay. That's how I know. Okay, let me say something about every short story. Which characters appear, some tropes, etc. The voice of reason. Geralt is in the temple of Melitele, recovering from injuries. He talks about his swords, the medallion, how one becomes a witcher, and Yennefer. He thinks about her a lot, by the way. There's the priestess Neneke, love her, and Dandelion. I actually prefer Yaskir, the Polish version of his name. But then again, Yaskir's direct translation to English is Buttercup. Let's go with Dandelion. The Witcher. Geralt is in Temeria and he fights Astriga, who was a princess born of a curse. This is the source material for episode 3 of the TV show. A Grain of Truth. It's a different spin on the fairy tale Beauty and the Beast. The Lesser Evil. It has elements of Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, and it also touches on something similar to Rapunzel. Geralt is in Blaviken. There's Stregobor, the wizard who annoys me, by the way, and Renfrey. Her story is heartbreaking, to be honest. She appeared on the first episode of the show and many people loved how she was portrayed. A question of price. This tells how Ciri became Geralt's child of surprise. In this world, there's this custom called law of surprise. When someone saves your life or does something equally heroic for you, as payment, the person can lay claim to something which you already possess but don't know about yet. If you don't honor the law of surprise, you're going against destiny, and it could mean death. This is the source material for episode 4 of the TV show. The Edge of the World 
Geralt and Dandelion meets a Sylvan and some elves who are desperate for food but too proud to cooperate with humans. It's the source for some events in episode 2. It's a bit boring, honestly, but there's a nice quote here. Geralt said, People like to invent monsters and monstrosities. Then they seem less monstrous themselves. They feel better then. They find it easier to live. And the last wish. This is the best story. Geralt goes to Rind and meets Yennefer for the first time. There's Dandelion, a Jean or a Jenny, and Yennefer just being powerful and complex. On to the second book, The Bounds of Reason. Um, dragons and a big reveal. We see Geralt and Yennefer, there's Dandelion, some dwarves and reavers, names you may or may not give your future pets like Vilentre Tenmerth, Bork Three Jackdaws, Thea and Veya, which is short for Alvianerli, Dorigare, and Mirta Brake. <laughs> I've probably butchered those names, I'm sorry. The story is depicted in episode 6, which is my favorite episode. What's our takeaway? The story tells us that even those who are different can survive. A Shard of Ice Here's Geralt and Yennefer being in a relationship, expressing how incredibly important they are to each other, but how it's hard to stay together. I enjoyed how Yennefer uses magic and annoys people just because she can. I didn't enjoy how the story left me with so many questions, though. Eternal Flame It's Geralt and Dandelion in a big city called Novigrad, meeting a Doppler named Teliko Lundgrevink Letorte, Penstock for short. His friends call him Dudu. I like the moral of the story. You'll also get schooled in venture capital investing. A Little Sacrifice It's a spin on The Little Mermaid. We also meet a female bard, Essie Davin. The theme of the story is of unreachable goals, and it tells us how these goals can actually be reached somehow. Sword of Destiny Geralt goes to the forest Brokilon and meets Ciri for the first time. She behaves like a royal brat here, but you'll eventually love her. We learn about dryads and how they live. Something more. And this, the last story, is the grand setup for the novels. Here's Geralt and Ciri reuniting. I like that scene so much. Geralt not believing in destiny? Here's destiny kicking his behind. Who appears here? Um, Geralt's mother, Visena. Queen Calante, the personification of death, Yennefer, and Dandelion. We learn about the Battle of Sodden Hill and why it's called the Hill of the Fourteen. This story is very touching. It ends almost where the first novel, Blood of Elves, started. The Witcher series, at its core, is about Geralt, Yennefer, and Ciri. Their strengths, vulnerabilities, and desires how destiny weaves them all together in an unconventional family unit, how destiny makes the impossible possible for them. I highly recommend The Last Wish and Sword of Destiny to be added to your reading list, especially before diving into the novels. If you've already read them, did you like the books? What are your favorite stories? Thanks for watching. See you next time.